Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. Today I am sharing a delicious recipe for buffalo chicken chili. So this particular recipe actually comes from Rachel Ray and it's kind of a special one because it is actually the most popular recipe from her 30 minute meals show. I used to watch this show obsessively when I was in college and I collected all of her cookbooks and many of her kitchen gadgets. And so she will always have a sort of a special place in my heart as it's when I sort of uh, learned to cook and learned my love for cooking. So this is a great recipe that you can make either on the stovetop or the slow cooker, but today I'm actually going to make it in the instant pot. So here are all the ingredients that I'm going to need. I have my eight quart instant pot. I'll link the one that I have down below, but like I said, if you don't have one of these, you can definitely just use the stovetop. I'm going to need some celery, one yellow onion, as well as some diced carrots. I'm just using baby carrots. I'm gonna need some garlic cloves, as well as some ground chicken. If you can't find ground chicken, go ahead and substitute ground turkey. I also have some chicken stock. This is just homemade that I have on hand. Some bay leaves, some smoked paprika. Uh, you'll also need some hot sauce. I like to use the Frank's Red Hot brand, a can of tomato sauce, as well as a can of fire roasted diced tomatoes. These are from Trader Joe's some salt and pepper, and optional is some blue cheese, as well as some tortilla chips for garnish. So I'm going to start by dicing up all of my veggies for this recipe. I'm starting with the celery. I do like to cut my celery stalks lengthwise before I cut them crosswise just because you get smaller pieces of celery. I'm not a huge, huge fan of celery. I do like the flavor of it, but when I cut it up like this, it just makes it smaller in the actual dish and you almost can't even tell that it's there. I'm using baby carrots just because that's what I had on hand. If you are using regular carrots, I believe the recipe calls for two large carrots peeled and diced, uh, but use whatever you have on hand, definitely. Uh, I also for forgot to mention that I will link this particular recipe down below if you'd like to print it off and make it yourself. And as well as I will link the chef's knife that I have. I always get a lot of questions on that. And I also get a lot of questions on my butcher block counter yes I chop right on it <laughs> I have a video showing how I care for that so I can um, be sure to link that down below as well I'm just going to put all of my chopped veggies into a bowl that will make it easier to transport them over to the instant pot last thing is just dicing up a yellow onion I just like to make sure that I dice this as fine as I can you can use any onion that you have on hand if you have red onion on hand or scallion those would work as well so I have my instant pot on saute and I have a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of the insert I'm just going to put my ground chicken in now the original recipe did call for two pounds of ground chicken uh, I only used one and then I added a can of beans in at the end which worked out fine but if you wanted to do it low carb or keto and follow the original recipe go ahead and use two pounds of the ground meat. So I'm just going to saute the chicken until it's cooked through. I'm adding a little bit of salt and pepper just to flavor it up a little bit. And that tool you saw me using there was a, uh, a Pampered Chef, I believe it's called a mix and chop. That is a great tool if you cook with ground meat a lot. It's one of those things that you don't think you need until you have it. <laughs> I also got that um, from Pampered Chef, but they do have them on Amazon, so I'll link it down below. I went ahead and added my veggies, and next I'm going to squeeze in uh, some garlic. I do like to use a garlic press for this. It just makes it so much easier to extract all of the flavor and juices out of the garlic. So that goes into the Instant Pot, and then I'll just leave this on saute and stir it around until the meat is cooked through. Mm -hmm. 
Once my chicken is cooked, I'm going to add my spices and seasonings to it. So I'm adding some paprika. Uh, I can't remember whether the recipe calls for smoked paprika or not, but that's what I had on hand from Trader Joe's. And so I used that. I'm also adding some salt. You don't want to add very much spice to this because you're going to add hot sauce and that will be plenty of spice enough. I'm adding the one can of fire roasted diced tomatoes, one can of tomato sauce, as well as my chicken broth and a half a cup of the Frank's Red Hot. Go ahead and stir this around until it is well combined. If you're making this for young kids, I would probably cut back the hot sauce to a quarter of a cup. Um, it wasn't too spicy for my husband and I, but definitely probably too spicy for my kids. The next step is to add a bay leaf and then I'm going to put the lid on my Instant Pot, set the vent to sealing, and I'm just going to cook this on the chili setting. I am adding beans at a later point because they're already cooked through and I don't want them to get mushy cooking in the Instant Pot. Same thing if you were doing it on a stove, you would just let this simmer as the recipe calls and then add the beans at the end if you wanted to add those. So once the Instant Pot is done cooking, I went ahead and did a quick release. I tried to direct it under my range hood and turn the fan on. While that's releasing, I am uh, fixing up the garnish. So I have some tortilla chips laid out on a baking sheet. I have blue cheese on some and cheddar on the other ones just because my husband is not a huge fan of blue cheese, but I am, so I sort of did half and half. So here is my buffalo chicken chili all completed. You can see that everything is well combined. The chicken is really tender and it is delicious. You can go ahead and give it a taste. If you need to add some extra salt and pepper or sugar, go ahead and do that. Toast the chips carefully under the broiler until all the cheese is melted and then go ahead and serve them with the soup. This was definitely a delicious spin on chili and if you are a blue cheese fan, I would definitely recommend recommend doing the blue cheese chips with it because I think it does really finish off the dish. Thank you guys so much for watching this video today. If you want to check out some other cooking videos that I've done, I will leave them linked here on the screen, including a Pioneer Woman video that I did a few months ago. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.